Oh, good morning. You, you look like you're wearing a nice shirt. What are you doing here? Nice to morning. Good to see you. What are you doing? Taking over Conrad's job? Run it, yeah. Run in the camera. Oh. I'll see you after. This week, I purchased a new pair of glasses. The significance of this, it's the first style change in 34 years. And this is a really big deal. There will be a, a sermon later on in the summer talking about this life change. So, I had a great time talking to Betty this morning, who also has a new so this would be a copy of our conversation. I'd love to get your opinion on my, my new book. <laughs> on the altar today, we have early season golden rod, uh, which is just coming out. Uh, and aside, it's usually soon followed by crickets in early August. So there's a bouquet of that. Uh, also, Bill and Betty brought in some beautiful day lilies from their farm of Ludlow. We had all a great time last week to be a friend's garden tour in your place. So flowers are taking over today. There's flowers on the piano, uh, all across the rail down front, and brought in flowers. Uh, and also on the altar, I went down to our garden last night, and there were green beans that were ready. On Tuesday morning. So uh, these are uh, anyone who is interested in taking a bean home to try to sample or to cook a whole batch. These are uh, our gift to anyone who likes these. The first beans of the season. If anyone needs fans, these are spread out in the uh, seats. The pin holders. And I was going around this morning, I found one of these. <laughs> a homemade version which works equally well as our fine balls of wood. So the humidity has helped a little bit drop the uh, last two days, which is a welcoming shift. Our prelude this morning is by Ewan Dobson, who was here earlier this summer in June for a Sunday noon concert, also known as a bird whisperer from New Brunswick. So I thought I would play one of his songs, a summer selection of his 2021 album, Tribunal of Penance, and this is titled In the Deepest Lake. <laughs>
One thing we discovered last week, Ira figured this out immediately after the service, came down and realized that the altar clock under the bowl had been inhibiting the sound quality. We have made adjustments today. Any comments, Ira? So this is vibrational attunement and allow the sound to attune and center your body, mind, energy. We'd like to chalice today as a reminder that our mind and our awareness is a clear witness as to what's happening. Yet, while our mind may be clear, our personal filter or our conditioning can cloud things up and lead to confusion. Today, we aim to be a clear witness without attachment or distortion, clear seeing, clear action, and we do this together. We look to the light. Opening words this morning are in prayer by poet Diane Ackerman. In the name of daybreak and the eyelids of the morning, and the wayfaring moon and the night when it departs, I swear I will not dishonor my soul with hatred, but offer myself humbly as a guardian of nature, as a healer of misery, as a messenger of wonder, as an architect of peace. In the name of the sun and its mirrors, and the day that embraces it, and the cloud veils drawn over it, and the uttermost night, and the male and the female, and the plant burst.
first thing you see in the crowning seasons of firefly and young apple. I will honor all life, wherever and in whatever form it may dwell, on this earth that is my earth, and in the mansion of the stars. Amen. You can find a hymn book located close to you. We're going to sing number 100. And this is a summer song uh, called Peace Like a River. Joy Like a Fact.
how to witness to other people, how to be a mirror with grace, so that as a community, we can heal others, we can be genuine, and we can choose how we react. And this week is witnessing ourselves. So the topic is the key to our inner sanctuary, and you'll only see that on this first and last slide. What is your inner sanctuary, and do you have one? Do you have a place of peace that you can go to? So, um, that's where our power is. If there is a really loud influence on you, 
or you have a really strong appetite, or there's something that's hooking your mind, you can always root back down into your sanctuary. It's right there. You can let go and come right down to where you need to be. So, uh, this is a, a topic that is near and dear to my heart because it changed my life. And my dad was the one to share it with me. I was in North Carolina. I had just gotten off recruiting duty. I was at work and I was not connecting with my leader. I was a staff sergeant. I had a gunnery sergeant that was in charge of me. And there was no, like, no connection. So I went into his office and I said, hey, I've been a high performer in the past. I apply myself. I really do. I apply myself. But I've always had guidance. Will you be my mentor? Will you help me? Will you show me what you know? And we can move together forward. And he said, you don't need a babysitter. Welcome to the business <coughs> club. Get back to work. And I pouted. Like an adult child that I am, I pouted about it. And I was upset, and it was affecting me. It was affecting the way I felt. And my dad came to visit, and we went out to lunch at Waffle House. This was in North Carolina. And, uh, and I was complaining, and my dad is a pastor. And he told me, your attitude is your choice. You're the one controlling this. And I was just like, no way. It's true. Our attitude is our choice. When we choose, when we, when we choose to be intentional. Okay, inclusion. Your attitude is your choice. Know your power in a community. When we choose to be loving, we are mutually beneficial for both the other and the self. It's a shift away from the narcissism. We're not. So I use it in a very specific way. The state of narcissism is the state of blank character. It creates like this bubble reality we would want. If I was to sum up the biggest issue that Change the way they approach, approach reality itself. 
at the end of the day, I, I do think, even as I said earlier, life is really a single player game. It's all going on in your head. Whatever you think you believe will very much shape your reality. Both. Do you perform? Also, just your everyday experience of reality. If you're walking down the street and you're judging everyone, you're like, I don't like that person. They're skin color. I don't like that. Oh, she's, she's not attractive. That guy's fat. This person's a loser. The more you judge, the more you just separate yourself. And you'll feel good for an instant, but then you'll feel good about yourself. I'm better than that. But then you'll feel lonely. And then you just see negativity everywhere. The world just reflects your own feelings back to you. Reality is neutral. You do have that choice. So this is what I meant, that happiness is a choice. If you believe it's a choice, then you can start working on it. And I can't tell you how to find it, because it's your own conditionings that are making you unhappy. So you have to uncondition yourself. Oh, that whole video worked. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, I'm trying to bring in these videos so that it's not all coming from me. Lots of different sources, lots of different directions in life, but are we all trying to reach the same place within ourselves. If we are reversing our sensory perception, I'm seeing out, what if I try to see in? That's the goal, becoming aware so that we can be intentional. The witness, right in here. Okay, your perspective. Your perspective has a lot to do with your behavior. Your perspective has a lot to do with your moods. Your perspective has a lot to do with how you feel, how you behave, how you act. A lot of your daily activity. Your attitude is your choice. You know your power. You can control your perspective. Whatever picture you hold in your mind, the brain translates that into complementary chemistry. If I have a picture of love, my brain releases wonderful things in the blood, like dopamine for pleasure, oxytocin to bond with others. When you're in love, you're releasing this growth hormone which enhances your vitality. And that's why when people fall in love, they get so healthy, they get, you know what I'm saying?
My mind is trying to tell me it's important, but let me listen to my heart. Is my heart saying this is important? Do I need to be able to let this dictate how my day goes? This thought, whether it's a video we watch on Facebook or the technology not working during a, a presentation, whatever it is, <coughs> we can let it go and release that stress. Or we can take it into ourselves. Maybe there are thoughts that you want. Like last week I talked about intentionally being a good dad, putting yourself into whatever you're doing, identifying with that task. I am a good dad right now. I'm working on it. I'm intentional. I'm putting my heart into it. Same thing with our thoughts. Be aware of what you're thinking and why you're thinking it so you can change it if you want to. You have that option. The ego and your identity. That's a tough one because it's not really talked a lot in the West. We don't have a lot of space between our thoughts and our concept of the self. So your identity is your choice. Know your power. You can choose. I'm choosing to be a good dad. That's what I'm focusing on and I put my heart into it. You can choose to be a good husband. You can choose to be a good person. You can choose to be whatever you want. That's your identity that you're putting into your behavior. You're putting your value into it. Let's see if this works. Also, the feeling of a personal identity, that's the base. The feeling is something, not something that is just you. And what you realize is you are always in this. The person who has a lot of struggles in life is also a mind creative identity. And it is observable. And you can feel this mind creative identity floating about. And still, no change in your being. Your being is totally present, complete, now. This is the first huge transformation to experience. And I say, continue to be with this. Even if it's for 10 minutes. Try to do this two or three times a day and sit with it and become stronger. It's the end. Awakening to what you have always been. Find your roots. It's not up here. Dig deep, root down. Um, Self-control. That's what this is all about. Who has authority over you? Do you have it? Are you letting influence control you? Or are you the one controlling influence? It's all perspective. It all, it's all right here. Whatever you want to do. The ego is the gatekeeper. So the ego is those patterns that we take into ourselves. If I'm uh, Gunnery Sergeant in the Marine Corps. I'm going to act a certain way. I'm going to be like, mm, ah. that's what I'm identifying as right then. Or I can let it go. Is it a good idea for my ego to be rooted in my skill sets when I'm being a parent? Do I need to identify as Gunnery Sergeant Atkinson while I'm being a dad? Is that a healthy ego? Is that the kind of behavior I want my kids to emulate? No, it's not. I'll let that go. I'll let that go. It stops ourselves from understanding our depth. When we get defensive, when we are afraid, we push things away. We have to choose inclusion. And it can be uncomfortable. Because what we're doing is choosing to accept the unknown. I don't know what's going on in your heads right now. I'm just talking. I have no clue, but I'm choosing to move forward into the unknown, to say what I feel and what has helped me understand myself and find my own happiness. Our mind is the tool that can solve our problems or trap us in recycled patterns. Our perspective is what flavors our experiences and the experiences of those around us. You can call it the witness, you can call it awareness, you can call it the observer, you can call it consciousness. We're all saying the same thing. If 
you are aware of the key to your inner sanctuary. What is the key? What is your key? Right here. Uh, shortly after my dad told me my attitude was my choice, I chose to be happy. And then people around me started being happier. And then they started to question me. Why are you being so happy? That's who I choose to be. I had someone tell me they were criticizing me at work because I was in a position of authority and I was being loving. And they're like, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing being loving while you have authority over these people, right? I'm like, why are you doing that? And I said, it's not because of them. It's because that's who I am. I want to be a loving person. I'm choosing that intentionally. If I make that about you, who has authority over me? You do. If I am loving because that's who I am, I have authority over me. That's my key to my inner sanctuary. It's knowing why I'm doing something and is it what I want. I try to listen to my heart, not my head. I use my head like Einstein did. But Einstein said, if you can't say something simply, you don't know what you're talking about. That's why I'm trying to repeat the exact same thing in different ways right now. Because I don't have a college degree, I'm not a genius. But I do feel like when you own your behavior, when you own yourself, your authority, authenticity is easy. To be genuine is easy. And it's contagious. So, I have these short videos that I can uh, reference and you can watch later. I'll put it on the, uh, I'll send it so that it can be posted in the comments for the YouTube video. So that if you want to rewatch this, you can actually watch all those videos and see what they say. Uh, <laughs> uh, and we'll get past that technology uh, barrier there. Um, this is, this is how I see, this is my point of view, how I see a way for me to grow. It doesn't have to be yours. You don't have to give authority over yourself over to me. This is information. You're processing it with your mind. How does it make you feel? Follow that. Okay, the last thing I have. I have this book, um, it's like a parent's philosophy book called The Parents Tao Te Ching. And this is something that I read so that I can gain insight. I don't have to be that insightful, I can read somebody else who already did it. And as long as I can comprehend it, I'm like, hey, that's great. I don't have to sit around and do all that thinking. So I'm going to read a passage to you that I thought was really good. Create clarity and encourage freedom. Virtue comes from within our children. It is a natural part of their being. It can never be taken from them. It follows them wherever they travel. It guides them in all circumstances. It will cause their life to flourish and be filled with joy. Amidst the hundreds of voices clamoring for their attention, saying, this way, no, that way, your children will learn to trust their own hearts, thus they will act wisely. You need not worry. How can you keep from worry? Look inside yourself. And what I've been doing, and what my spiritual path is, is reparenting myself. I'm not reading this so I can teach my kids. I'm reading this so I can reparent myself. If I fix myself, how much easier is it for me to be a good parent to my kids? That's my goal. And that also is the conclusion of my class, my lecture. Thank you, everyone. Um, does anyone have any questions? You and Ada. Josh, I do. Yes. Um, a few weeks ago, I sat with you and your family and had an ice cream Sunday. Uh, I heard you use the word grace frequently as you've done here. Does the word grace carry you have a definition of feeling of all that means in your head if you talk about it? That's a really good question. Uh, Steve just asked, what does grace mean to me, pretty much? So when we hear these noises that are coming out of my mouth,
because we speak a language, we associate a certain amount of information to these noises. When I say grace, what I feel is, this is how someone is. Do they have to continue being that way? This is how I am. These are my patterns. I am honest and open-hearted and vulnerable with myself. How deeply am I willing to know myself? And how deeply am I willing to forgive and let myself change? That, to me, is grace. And if we can do that for others, give them their opportunity to change, it comes back to us. And we find that forgiveness becomes a currency. Not transactions. We're not doing tasks for others. We're just doing. Um, last week, Dan came over and fixed my toilet. It burst. That we have like 70, 80 psi here in town. I put my whole body pressure over the pipe that was next to the toilet. The fitting popped off. Um, I had to shut the main water off. Call a good friend who is exceptionally capable in so many different ways. He came over and he fixed it. And because I wasn't bitter, because I wasn't upset, because I chose to have my own attitude on that situation, it was an amazing day. Just met multiple new friends, wherever she's at. Love you, Ben. Um, Dad came over. We talked about our vision. Like, how do we want to invest ourselves here? How do we want to grow in our community? How do we want to be a part? And we talked about creating a nonprofit or moving forward in some way, sharing acts of service for others. Or, I mean, that's what happened. It could have been I was upset, I was angry, and I shut down, and nothing good happened for the rest of the day. I chose to be open, and I was gifted with grace that day. That's my definition of grace. Anybody else? Any other questions? I don't have a question, but just to piggyback on that, another way that I think is, this, again, is just another way to say it, of, uh, it's certainly in line with what you're saying. Um, a teacher that I knew, what he said about grace, he said, the winds of grace are always blowing. Do you have your sail up? Or are you there to receive it? Uh, and is there all the time to access? So. Yeah. It is always there. And I've uh, also heard of grace being referred to uh, our past as the soil. Grace is not identifying with our karma. Grace is not identifying with our suffering. Grace is seeing it as an opportunity to grow. And same with others. That's an opportunity for that person to grow. That person that's suffering. Thank you, Linda. I think I'm Early this time. I tried to hurry. It probably helped that not all the uh, videos worked. Thank you everyone for your time. I look forward to talking to you more during coffee hour. So that's why we distinguish the shells. We leave this gathered community, but we do not leave our connection, our concern, or our care for each other. Our connection and our stories continue to hold us together. Until we are together again, my friends, be strong, be well, be true. Be filled with grace. Be loved.
thank you everybody for tuning in today. If you'd like to show your support, please uh, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel if you're not already subscribed, and sh help us out by sharing this message by clicking the share button. If you'd like to make a monetary donation to the UU Church Holton, there is a link to our online donations in the video description down below. And again, thank you so much, and have a blessed day.